Thursday, January the 10th at 7 p.m. Madam Clerk, if you'd call the roll. Charlie Davidson. Here. George Glover. Here. Ben Salceda. Here. Kyle Nordic. Here. Tom Jones. Here. George Caps. Present. Brandy Bailey. Here. Jim Schrader. Here. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you, Councilman Salcedo will lead us in the invocation and uh, I will lead the Pledge of Allegiance if everybody would please stand. Let's try here. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us the opportunity that we have to be again assembled here as we take on the matters of the city business. We ask for your wisdom and your guidance. We're thankful for another year, another opportunity here to make a difference in our community. We'd ask that you be with our law enforcement officers as yesterday we recognized National Law Enforcement Day. I pray that you protect each one of them their spouses, their families, keep them, give them peace and, and wisdom and protection. Be with our president, our governor, our leaders in Topeka, and Lord, those that serve overseas and at home protecting us. Keep them safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be seated. Okay, we'll start with approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Ben? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Charlie? Second. Motion and a second. Uh, seeing no further comments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 8-0. We'll move to awards and presentations. We have the Park City Pride Christmas Light Contest winners. If Jerry, you could come forward. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, Park City Community Pride, we had our holiday light contest again. We call it the light fight. And uh, I don't know if we've got any members, any winners here tonight or not. If you'd please come up here, I'll name Ernesto Salas. Congratulations. Thank you. Mark Chabode. Of course, he didn't make it tonight. Oh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Casey Bloom. I guess Baum, excuse me. Terry Ford. <coughs> Congratulations. And Kevin Tuttle. We want to thank everybody who participated. It lights our city up and makes it more beautiful. Thank, thank you. you very much. Jerry, I just had a question for you. <laughs> Gary, are those picked by ward, or how do you guys do that? We uh, normally have the uh, contest winners from last year. They go around one evening, all the, all the entrants. Now, we had a couple wards that didn't enter this very well this year. So we only had five winners this year. Ah. But all wards were eligible. We had first and second place in all the wards <coughs> that had oh, wow. entrants. Great. Great. So uh, with the check they get, they have a responsibility for next year then? Yes, they have a responsibility to judge us for next year. <laughs> <laughs> then you call them a year from now. All right. And you pass it on. This house won a couple years ago. You want to do the picture right here? I'll stand right here. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, nobody signed up for public forum. 
Uh, we do not have a staff report tonight from the city administrator. We'll move on to the consent agenda. <coughs> do I have a motion? Ben? A motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Jim? I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. See no further comments. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Okay, item six, approve a change order for Pearson Construction in the amount of 7,566. Sean? Did I miss something? Sir, item six and seven are part of consent. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we can approve it again if you'd like, sir. No, that's okay. Once is enough. We won't spend it twice. Okay, item eight, under new business, consider appointment of council representative of Ward 4 with a term expiring in 2025. Uh, with that said, I'll turn this over to Kyle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as such in life, all good things must come to an end. Um, as I formalize my education and come to the completion of that, I was offered the city administrator position for the city of Sedgwick, which means that ethically I do need to step down from the dais and enter into the other side of this city governance world. Um, with that comes a grave responsibility, and I am happy to accept that responsibility. However, I am extremely sad that I do have to leave this city. Um, this city is my home. I was born here, raised here, and have lived here for 31 years of my life. It was truly an honor to be elected by my constituents to come and serve on this, on this council. Um, in my short tenure here, I have made a great deal of friendships, have served next to a lot of good people and a lot of good people who have a lot of great heart for this city. Um, the staff out there, I absolutely love you guys, and you know that. You guys are the greatest asset to this city, and without you guys, the city would not be what it is today. Um, I truly hope that you guys continue to have that love in your heart and continue to help the next generation have that love and pride for Park City. Um, with that, it is time for me to hand over my seat. And I am elated to hand over my seat to an individual who I feel is qualified for the position and who will continue on with the vision and legacy of Park City. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Appreciate your service to our city. Thank you, With that, thank you for your service from the years 2022 and 2023. I feel like we just got started and it's already ending, but right. we wish you well in your future endeavors in Cedric, and I have no doubt you'll be a great asset to them. And uh, we look forward to see you instead of uh, serving as a council member. You have to deal with council members now. So, <laughs> so I wish you well on that, Kyle, and thank you for your service to our community. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. Here we go. There's the, there's the picture. Thank you. Can we stop? <laughs> <laughs> And Kyle has agreed that uh, he serves as one of our delegates on the Chisholm Creek Utility Authority, and he will still be a resident of Park City, and he has agreed that he will continue to serve us uh, with the CCUA. So thank you to him for that. Uh, with that departure, Arrest him, um, I would invite uh, Charles Schwanke will be the person who I intend to appoint for this position. If he would come forward. Do you want to swear them in down there, or how do you do that? Yeah, we probably ought to do that. <laughs> so, council members, uh, according to uh, city ordinances, uh, when a, a council member resigns from the council, it's the mayor's uh, position to appoint a replacement for that position. Um, I met Charles uh, a couple years ago. Um, I felt like his prior experience as a council member in another city uh, for eight years and then uh, 24 years as a member of the planning commission, and he was the chairman for 24 years, I guess it was. 23. 23 years. <laughs> so uh, last year, if you guys will remember, we actually appointed him to the planning and zoning for Park City. 
Uh, and he's enjoyed doing that and uh, loves to be involved in the community. He's lived in Park City for two years, but uh, is very engaged and loves uh, being a part of what we're doing. So uh, with that said, I that he would be my appointment for the position for Ward 4. Uh, that would The position would end in December of 2025. I would entertain a motion or any discussion. Ben. Yeah, I... Um First off in this, I want to kind of circle through this. Um, I want to say thank you first off to Council Member Nordic for his service. Uh, I was telling him I've learned a lot just in the short time we've had together and I've enjoyed having him next to me um, there for this last time, uh, for this last year. And so thank you for having the character, even though it's a tough decision to step aside, thank you for everything you've done. Second off, and to the business at hand, Here's, I had the opportunity to sit down with Mr. Schwenke uh, and talk with him. And um, after the mayor had mentioned who he'd like to fill, and uh, I feel completely at, uh, I feel completely at ease with the fact that Mr. Schwenke is going to do a phenomenal job for our city. And I'm excited now to get a new seat made, I guess, however you want to look at this. This is my third one in two and a half years, in a year and a half. So I'm hoping you stick around um, <laughs> there. But it's my privilege to nominate or to, uh, to accept the motion or to make a motion to approve uh, Charles Swanky for the Ward 4 district or Ward 4 position for city council member or city council. <laughs> I don't have my phone working. So with a term expiring in December of 2025. Thank you, Ben. Tom? I would second that. Okay. Brandy. I just want to say, Kyle, um, I appreciate your service to the city. Um, thank you for all you've done. Yes. Um, we will truly miss you, but I wish you the best of luck in the city of Sedgwick. They're lucky to be gaining you, but um, you're not too far away because we'll still be working together on Tism Creek Utility Authority, and we know we have a lot of work there. So, But congratulations, and Charles, um, I've read your your background, and um, I think you'll do a great job, and I'm looking forward to working with you and getting to know you as well. Thank you. Any further comments? All right, with that said, we have a motion on the floor, Ben motion to approve the appointment of Charles Schwenke as council member of Ward 4 with term expiring December 25. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Congratulations. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And faithfully to the best of my ability. And faithfully to the best of my ability. Discharge the duties of council member. Discharge the duties of council member. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Okay, we will move to item nine. <clears throat> and with that said, with the appointment of Charles to the city council, we now have a vacancy in planning and zoning um, for his seat. Um, I, my intent, as many of you got in the packet, is to appoint Mr. John Oswald, who's been a longtime resident of Park City and served us on other boards, and he's very eager to join on. John, if you'd come forward. Just in case anybody has any questions, I would also, uh, if anyone does have questions, you can feel free to ask him or pick him apart, and uh, then I would entertain a motion. George Capps. I just want to make a motion. Go ahead. <clears throat> Mr. Oswald is a gentleman that I've known for many years, and I owe much of my success in life to Mr. Oswald, and I'm more than happy to uh, move to approve 
John Oswald as a member of the Planning Commission Board of Zoning Appeals with a term expiring in 2025. Tom. I'm going to second that. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further comments? Well, that was a lot easier. <laughs> All in favor? Confidence. Aye. Aye. <laughs> All opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Congratulations. Thank you for a vote of confidence. I appreciate it. Thank you for stepping up and serving the community. Okay. Move to item 10. Discuss and consider election of council president. Randy. I would like to nominate Jim Schroeder to be council president this year. Whoops, I'm sorry. Ben? Yeah, um, it's been an honor to do this for the past year, and I'm excited to second that nomination for Jim Schroeder for uh, council president for 2023, and I know that he would do a great job serving us. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further nominations for council president? Okay, see no more, no further nominations. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Motion passes 8 0. Thank Congratulations, you, Jim. Thank you. Okay, on to item 11. Conduct a public hearing pursuant to section 8 1012 of the Municipal Code to consider whether conditions existing on their property at 6603 North Hydraulic render it a blighted premises under section 1009. 8-1009 of the Municipal Code. Doug. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, this is the property that uh, uh, was otherwise known earlier in, in, uh, or in the fall of 2022 as Horrorwood. Um, there, there was a failed attempt. Uh, there was a, uh, a gentleman came and got a permit to have an event there, located uh, material uh, structures, uh, on the property and then got into a, uh, what appeared to have been a dispute with the property owner uh, and he was then unable to complete what he intended for this approximate month worth of, uh, of a kind of a haunted house experience, a Halloween experience on the, on the property at 6603 North Hydraulic. Uh, the, the, uh, the property owner asked for a permit. Uh, it was denied by uh, this body sometime in the, I think the early part of October um, but uh, the, the property owner uh, went ahead and, and, and kind of engaged in, a, in, in what somewhat of a, was planned by the, 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 the former uh, applicant uh, and did so in a way that uh, caused uh, some violations of state law as far as transport, transporting people from a neutral area onto the property. Uh, and since that time, uh, since, since Halloween was over, there's really been little change to kind of the blighted appearance of that property uh, with structures, uh, pallets. Uh, there's some vehicles located on the property. Uh, this is a violation of, of, of our um, Chapter 8 of our municipal code and uh, constitutes blighted premises. Uh, in addition, um, the, the location of accessory structures on the property is a violation of our zoning ordinance. Uh, so under our under our municipal code, uh, we have noticed this up for a public hearing in front of you. Um, there was 30 days given of notice to the property owners. Uh, they failed to respond, and I'll, I'll let uh, Jennifer get up and explain to you the current uh, condition of the property, uh, which I believe is essentially unchanged from what it was last year. Um, uh, at the end of the, the hearing, I don't know if the owners are going to appear or anybody on their behalf, uh, then you can make a finding and determine that this is blighted, which then gives the city the right to go in and remove the, the, the elements that cause it to be blighted uh, at a cost that then can be assessed against the property. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions from council? Um, so I'm going to refer back to my notes. <clears throat> Initially, we did start this case uh, September 20th, uh, called for a blighted property to consume the entire uh, field next to the residence. 
Uh, there are several uh, structures made out of pallets that are, are kind of extensive. There is several tarps over the pallets. Um, there is two school buses on the property. There is an empty semi-trailer on the property. There's numerous uh, piles of wood stacked up. Um, even part of the old structure that they had torn down from the, uh, the original horror wood attraction uh, is all stacked up on the property and it's causing uh, areas for uh, nuisance animals to live come in right next to the park. Um, I did go out on December 5th. Uh, this was supposed to be about four or five days after I had spoke to a gentleman on the property and uh, it was still in violation. I had given him 30 days prior to get anything cleaned up, to get anything started. He had requested this because uh, during Thanksgiving, he was gonna have family in town that could have helped him. On December 5th, I went out and nothing had been changed. Um, so I had spoke with the city attorney, Doug, and we looked uh, as far as the, the procedure, what the next step was. And uh, at that time, it was to do a formal hearing I did post the formal hearing notification to the front door and I also sent it via certified mail. Um, it did come back un undeliverable. It, it had been attempted to be served three times, um, but nobody had officially signed for it or anything for tonight. Uh, when I uh, came in to work today, I did go by the property and I did take several pictures uh, and nothing has been changed since December 5th. So Doug, what would be our next step after this discussion tonight? Ask if anybody in the public has anything to add. Anybody in the public would like to come forward and speak on this matter, please do so now. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, Jeff Stone, uh, I was at the meeting where they were denied the permit for the uh, haunted house, and I can tell you uh, they did have it. Uh, a friend of mine's son worked the uh, haunted house so I'd be happy to give you that name and address after the meeting thank you anybody else like to come forward on this issue okay mayor and council if nobody else has anything to offer I, I would suggest that the that you have information in front of you that justifies you finding that this property is blighted uh, uh, under let me give you the correct reference in the Uh, under section 8-1009 of our municipal code uh, w once you have made once you have made that motion to find it blighted uh, i would also suggest that you direct city staff to immediately take steps to either with city uh, forces or contracted for from a third party to address the problems out there and get them abated okay ben yeah mr mayor <clears throat> and uh, I definitely agree there with what council is saying on this. This is a property within Ward 3 and uh, something that most of us probably drive by pretty consistently. And I am a big proponent of property right, individual property rights and the ability to do what you want to on your property as long as it does not is not detrimental to public safety and public health. And what we're seeing here on this property is qualifies for both. It is a public safety concern um, from what is able to be housed out there, what animals and creatures are able to live out there. Uh, and obviously that falls into the health aspect as well. And so based upon the recommendation uh, from code enforcement and legal counsel, I'd make a motion that we find this as blighted property uh, according to uh, 8-001. 1009. 1009. I knew I was going to get those confused. Uh, and I would also instruct staff to to remedy this either through our own means or to find a third independent or an independent council or independent group, I'm sorry, to uh, take care of the situation. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Charlie? I'll second that. Brandy? Sorry, I missed you. Okay, Tom. 
Well, I've got a question. There was a gentleman that started this when he originally came for the permit, and then it switched over to the second person that ended up with it. And he had some personal property on that that he never got back. And has he been reached out to to see if he wants any of it? I don't know. I don't if that's know that that's something that we want to involve ourselves in, wh whether it's okay. his or this is stuff that you can't prove pellets or not identifiable. I'm talking about the trailer so stuff I, or I something. I think we'll abate it. Okay. And if he's paying attention and he and he and he wants to uh, uh, have this delivered somewhere, maybe we can work something out. But I don't think it's uh, I think it's I don't think it's appropriate for us to determine between these two inv individuals who who owns what junk out there. I don't disagree, <laughs> but I'm saying there was somebody that had vested interest in it at one time, and I think you ought to be made aware of it. So if he wants to pick up any of it, he can. It doesn't sound like that's part of the motion, I guess. I just want to be clear. No, I'm, that's, no that's me after the fact okay. making a statement. Okay. okay. Definitely not part of the motion. Just, just to be clear. <laughs> okay, seeing no further comment, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Okay, item 12, consider an ordinance amending section 14-202 of the municipal code, establishing the speed limit for 85th Street North. Doug. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, we've had an awful lot of speed limit ordinances recently, and hopefully this is the last one. Um, uh, it, it, I did not catch this when we did the last change, which was just a couple of meetings ago, uh, but 85th Street North uh, was really not addressed in section 14-202. Uh, and as it's signed currently, it's quite confusing. Um, as I said in the report, when you enter the speed limit, enter the city from either the east or the west, you're going from, uh, it, it's, it's set on the outside the city limits at, at 55 miles an hour. Uh, there may be even signs that reduce that down to 40. At, but uh, what this ordinance change does is it sets a uniform speed limit from the east city limits to the west city limits for 85th Street North at 50 miles per hour. Uh, upon adoption of that, uh, uh, Public Works will arrange to get any conflicting signs taken down and appropriate signage put up. Thank you, Doug. Tom. Well, I discussed with the mayor, and 53rd Street is 55 miles an hour until the Park City city limits, and it drops to 40. Why would we want to be inconsistent on 85th Street? I, it's 40 I, everywhere else in town. I think 53rd or 85th Street's four lanes. Um, I mean, it's quite a bit. I mean, probably less traffic than what you're seeing on 53rd as far as congestion. No. I mean, you have a school down at 53rd and hydraulic, uh, plus a lot of commercial stuff there right up to the road. So, I, I mean, I'm not arguing either way, but. There's no school there. Heights High School? Hillside. That's at Hillside. It's 55 over there. That's what I meant. The speed limit's 55 over there. So I'm just saying it's 40 everywhere else in town. We reduced it several years ago because we dropped hydraulic from 45 to 40. I'd want to know why we want to be inconsistent because that was part of the package that we lowered all the speed limits in the city. Well, <clears throat> sir, when we lowered all the speed limits, it was predicated on the commercial development, residential development. 85th is a little bit farther away, we have a lot more commercial development on 53rd Street than 85th. The only thing that's along there is Nyar, and that's it. Well, we've got the camper land on the other side. That is correct, We sir. have some uh, rental property there, or storage units now, and there's yes, opportunity sir. for growth up there. Yes, sir. But I just wonder why we're being inconsistent, because we were told at that time that part of a national thing, that the residential streets would drop to 25 unless they're posted otherwise. Correct. an ordinance. Correct. And that all main through affairs would go to 40. And I want to know why we're inconsistent. Well, I, I don't that, remember ever saying anything when I presented that ordinance that all arterials were 40. I, that's Well, unless they were previously marked. I mean, unless they were, we, at the time we said if there had been specifically an ordinance written designated a speed limit, then we left that, it alone. The last time that we had any question when it came to 85th Street, if we remember at the same time that we were addressing 77th, 85th did get addressed, right. uh, and it went out the next day. Public Works dropped it all the way down to 40 miles an hour. Right. And all of a sudden, there was some concern expressed from the neighborhoods around there that that's way too low. Okay. A traffic study had been done at the time where uh, when you do speed limits for uh, 
setting speed limits and everything, you should be looking at what is at the 85th percentile yeah. of what normally people are going to drive. And at the time, the speed study showed that 50 miles an hour is the 85th percentile. So that's why it is a little bit different. I can't answer for right now if there's inconsistency as far as 77th Street, 53rd, 60. I, I do know that there is less commercial traffic on 85th Street in the 85th percentile, and that was the recommendation from both Public Works and, and Public Safety. Well, um, so. probably about, about a year and a half ago, we dropped the speed limit on hydraulic. We dropped it on 53rd Street from 45 to 40. Yes, sir. So, okay. Ben. Yeah, I, I imagine that if development goes on along 85th Street North and we see anything, we can always come back and revisit that just as we're doing right now. Okay, so I'd make a motion to approve Ordinance 1157-2023, an ordinance amending Section 14202 of the Municipal Code of the City of Park City relating to maximum speed limits and repealing the original of said Section 14202. Thank you. Jim? I would second that. We have a motion by Ben, seconded by Jim. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's oh, roll call. Roll call. oh, it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Charlie Davidson? Aye. George Glover? Aye. Ben Salceda? Aye. Charles Schwenke? Aye. Tom Jones? Aye. George Capps? Aye. Brandy Bailey? Aye. Jim Schrader? Aye. Motion passes 8 0. Move to item 13 discuss and consider approval of a three year contract with iWork for code enforcement software. Chief? Mr. Mayor, council members, the uh, code enforcement officers have been using several pieces of software to track and process cases and code violations. Uh, they currently use forms that were created by the department in Excel and Word and uh, PDF forms. The current process, honestly, is cumbersome and it's not the most efficient. Uh, for the last few months, staff has been evaluating software from iWorks and for the last couple of years Public Works has been using this uh, same package, uh, the same software with a little different package but it, uh, it's from iWorks and they've found that it's worked very well for them. iWorks software will track and schedule inspections, citations, warnings, and it creates letters, notices of violations. Uh, they can even go out with the click of a button and attach photographs of the violations into the case without having to jump through a bunch of hoops in order to do that. The software is completely mobile, it's web-based, and it's customizable. So uh, there's a feature that also allows citizens to submit complaints if uh, we choose to activate that. This is a three-year contract. The cost for the first year is $5,658, which includes the, the implementation fee which was waived, by the way. The support and service fees may increase in subsequent years, but the sales contract states that they will not increase more than 5% per year. Uh, this is a budgeted expense, and staff recommends approval of the contract and the expenditure of the first year of uh, the fees at $5,658. And I would be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. George? No, I don't have any, any questions, Chief. Um, I would go ahead and make a move to approve and authorize the mayor to sign and execute a three-year contract with I work for code enforcement software in the amount of $5,658 for the first year. We have a motion and a second. Jim? I'd, I'd second um, for discussion if needed, but I don't, I don't have anything to add. Okay. Charlie? Uh, just real quick, Chief, does the, you said that you can activate uh, a portion where the citizens can mm -hmm. call in. Does that include it in this price? Yes, it is. It, okay. I'll just right. curious. Sometimes it, I think I wasn't really clear on that, but it would That's be a matter of just uh, whether the city chose to, to activate it, but it is included. Thank you. Okay, motion by George Glover, mm -hmm. seconded by Jim Schroeder. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 8-0 to item 14 discuss and, discuss and consider approving a change order number two 
with McCullough excavation for construction related to bar estates and the 50, 53rd Street lift station. Ms. Mayor, good, good evening. Back in September of 2021, council approved a contract with McCullough Excavation for construction of the 53rd Street lift station. At the same time that was occurring, Bar Estates was starting prep work on installing storm sewer and paving and discovered a buried electrical conduit that was creating a conflict. Attached is change order number two as requested by Bar Estates to lower the buried conduit approximately three feet. Bar Estates agreed to having the change order cost allocated to their project. And if council remembers about a month and a half ago, they provided updated petitions to account for the additional work. It's outside the, my authority of $12,804. And so we're requesting council approve that. Change order number two. Thank you, Brandy. I move to approve and authorize the mayor to sign change order number two in the amount of $12,804 to be paid out of the capital projects fund. Jim. I'd second. Okay, we have a motion by Brandy, seconded by Jim. Seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Yeah, item 15, discuss and consider agreement with Transystem Engineering for bridge inspections. Sean. Yes, sir. The city is required to get a annual or not annual, biannual inspections of all seven of our bridges. Transystem Engineering completed the last inspection in 2021. Attached is an updated scope of service where they will perform the National Bridge Inventory Field Inspection and Evaluation Services on the following seven bridges listed. KDOT requires the field inspection and evaluation be completed and submitted by May of this year. The total cost of the service is $3,600. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion. Jim. I would move to approve and authorize the mayor to sign and execute a contract with Trans System Engineering for bridge inspections in the amount of $3,600. Ben. Second. Okay. Have a motion and a second. Seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 8 0. Move to item 16 discuss and consider reinstating the new home buyers incentive program for 2023. Yes, sir. As council is probably well aware, the home buyers incentive plan was suspended back in May of 2021 due to the strength of the economy at the time and then limited supply of housing options available. Since then, the economy has somewhat taken a turn for the worse and substantial increases in inflation and interest rates and negatively impacting the housing market here in Sedgwick County as well as Park City. Staff is recommending or the home buyers incentive plan be reinstated for 2023 with the guidelines and requirements listed below, which are the exact same as they were back in 2021, as well as allocating $65,000 of the $125,000 budgeted for housing incentives under the general fund governing body. Those uh, criteria requirements would be that the applicant is a qualified home buyer contracted with a licensed builder, realtor and or developer, building permit is purchased or issued prior to December 31st of 2023, all construction performed by the contractor licensed by the city of Park City. Periodic inspections are performed as required by city code for the building permit. Construction is completed within one year of issuance of the building permit. A certificate of occupancy is issued by the building inspector. The builder and the developer will provide $3,000 worth of incentives applied to the reduction in either closing cost or some other amenity for the home and that the applicant files has a W-9 on file. And again, it, this is budgeted for 2023 under $125,000 for housing incentives under governing body. Thank you. Ben? Yeah, um, I'm in support of, of looking there through this. Um, in, in staff taking the time to look through and analyze where things have been, at, have there been any considerations to updating the requirements as far as or, or what's expected, or do you feel that maybe the market's changed in ways that we can be more creative in, in utilizing this? Um, anything along that line that we can maybe take a look at that might? I know that uh, when we started considering making the recommendation to go back before council, we had taken a look at a couple other cities and how they do. Um, some of them seem to be a little bit more uh, 
problematic for main, maintenance on an ongoing basis like the city of Valley Center, they actually abate the back, uh, taxes for the first five years, the city portion of the taxes. So that now you're required to maintain a tracking of each one of these homes that you're providing an incentive of and then actually calculating how much is for the county, how much is for the fire district as well as the city. In the end, the amount that they are abating is very similar to what we are requesting to do this. So it just made more sense to us. It's take care of it on the front end, make certain that the home builder uh, is contributing as well. And we, we do have home builders in the city that may not believe in this program. And if they're not willing to commit the $3,000, then that's, that's their prerogative. So, no, sir. Thank you. Tom? This is something I didn't want to see go away a couple years ago, but it did anyway. And uh, at that time, we were basically funding this from hookup fees and stuff like that. Is that, we've got the funds already set aside, but will that be the way it works in the future? Yes, sir. Okay, so it, this is something we're collecting money and we're just turning it back around. I just want the public to know how we're doing this. Uh, well, uh, let me clarify that. When you say from hookup fees. Well, in permit fees is what we've used in the initial funding. I don't know how the program was originally presented to council. I do know that over the last four years that I've been here, each year the council has identified at least $100,000 and it's been up to $125,000 for the last three years in a row under government, under governing body, housing incentives, and this takes care of all three of the programs that we have had in place, exterior grant, exterior paint, and home buyer incentive. Okay, so. well, in the beginning it was funded based on uh, permits, I believe. Yes, sir, and, and, so and that, it may have, changed. I just, I I'm, I'm okay. unaware of that, But we, we have the funds set aside and they haven't been spent, so we're gonna implement it yes, and sir. spend those dollars now. Yes, sir. Okay. I'd make a motion to approve reinstating the homeowners incentive program for 2023 and allocating $65,000 from the general fund governing body uh, housing incentives. Okay, we have a motion by Tom. Do I have a second? Ben. Second. Okay. I will, uh, I brought the list of new home permits for the last few years. And uh, in 2022, we were at 22 permits that were uh, issued. In 2021, we were 101. Uh, in 2020, we were at 49, and, which was the first year of COVID. And then uh, pre-COVID, we were 67, then 83, and then it bumps down to in the 30s and 20s. So just for the sake of history and what it's looked like, and I know that you know they've mentioned that some of the shortages or the uh, Houses, the change in the housing market was also uh, predicated on the shortage of employees to build houses eight to 10 and 12 months ago that now there's not houses getting finished right now. So, yes. um, Tom, did you still have anything yeah, else? Yeah, I, I just pushed the button again. I, I was trying to remember, we, we discontinued this in 2020, didn't we? In late 2021, yes, sir. 21, okay. And, and it wasn't so much discontinued, it was just suspended for the rest suspended, of the year. Right. So uh, again, in both the budgets, even for the 2022 budget, $125,000 of housing incentives was, was allowed. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, we have a motion by Tom, seconded by Ben. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Item 17, discuss and consider approving the exterior grant program and the exterior paint program for 2023. Sean? For the past couple of years, council has approved the exterior grant program as well as exterior paint. Uh, both of them have been received rather well within the community. Uh, even when we did suspend the homing, housing incentive in 2021, these two programs continued on. Uh, staff is proposing both programs be continued for 2023 with the following specifications. First of all, under the exterior grant program, uh, non-apartment residential, it applies to non-apartment residential properties. There needs to be a minimum of $2,500 investment by the property owner. The reimbursement amount is 20%, which means it's a minimum of $500 reimbursement with a maximum cap of $2,500 reimbursement. So if a homeowner is spending uh, at least $12,500, $12, they would max out um, 
Eligible improvements include, but are not limited to painting, siding, doors, window replacement, masonry repair, awnings, building additions, landscaping, but it must be on the same uh, property and lot as the residents, as well as new construction. Uh, but now that the housing incentive, new construction falls under that. Ineligible items include, but are not limited to play sets, play equipment, swimming pools, spas, sump pump, foundations, repair, and lawn care or maintenance. Uh, item number six is eligibility of improvements not listed are to be determined by the planning department director. All improvements must conform to Park City codes. Property owners must be current on their property taxes. And then uh, finally, the property program or the program property must be code compliant with the exception of the violation to be addressed by this grant program. Uh, then for the exterior paint program, it's simply a program that provides up to $250 reimbursement for paint and associated supplies. And it applies to single family residential properties. Multifamily duplexes and rental properties are currently not eligible. Property owners must be current on their property tax. And again, property owners must prepare the property prior to making the repairs such as scraping, cleaning, and preparing the exterior as needed. As far as the fiscal impact under the FY23 budget, the homeowner's incentive is again 125,000 under the governing body. Thank you, Sean. Ben. <clears throat> um, on this here, I thought we had had the conversation a couple years ago to remove new construction on there for the reason that we had suspended the, the home buyer's oh, incentive. And yes, so sir. we had removed that as part of that. Yes, sir, that so, is correct, we did. So putting this back in there, is there a purpose to that? Uh, the only thing that I can imagine is that this was Just a holdover copy. from previous, but we can okay. verify that the the stipulations are in compliance with whatever council last directed. The other question I have, if leaving it in there, and this might be a question more for uh, Doug, here is leaving this in here, would this allow for someone to, in, a, in essence, double dip on a new project. If I get a new housing incentive, which I qualify for, and then under this one, I still qualify for this incentive here, what's, what's legally there to keep me from getting both? I suggest we put a provision in there that you can't do that. Okay, so yeah. I would, I, I, I wanna make a motion just because I wanna make sure we clarify this piece to it. Can we have a considerable yeah. discussion among yeah, the Yeah, if there's more, I, but I want to make sure that when we make a motion that we strike the new home purchase in there because to me this means it seems like we could double dip. I think that's a good point. Thank you, Ben. Tom? When this was brought to council to start with, it was basically for working in some of the poorer areas to paint houses. Correct. And uh, it exploded into doing other things. Um, I would support the second half of this, but I'm not going to vote for the first half. So I, I just can't support the exterior $50,000 at the beginning of it. I, the, the exterior grant program, I, I just, I'm struggling with giving somebody funding to go side their house or something like that, I guess. So was this? Didn't there we, are other programs around that we could be using for that. That uh, SCED is one of them that that we could be doing something with. Okay, thank you, Tom. Yes, Tom. Sir, I appreciate your comments because if we go back and and remember, one of the things that we did do on the exterior grant program is we wanted to make certain that it applied to the older homes, mm -hmm. and that's so obviously there's something amiss. And so I would uh, I would ask that council table the exterior grant program at this time so that if there is a motion that they approve the exterior paint if that is the direction of the council and and i would prefer to bring back the exterior grant program at the next meeting as to your question as far as double dipping so to speak <coughs> each one of the application does sit there and say incentive programs that the home buyer incentive plan the exterior grant program the exterior paint program are all limited to one per property per owner per year so that way we would, that prevents that. But still, there's other stipulations that I should have caught, and that's on me, should have caught on the exterior grant program. So, 
Thank you. Um, does I, I guess I would say this. Is there any council members that have any other recommendations or suggestions or anything you'd like Sean to add to this or take away from this when he brings it back to the council? With that said, Tom? I was going to say, you grabbed the last half of what I couldn't get together. And I remember us going through that and we identified some things and we went back and tweaked it and uh, it was more palatable. This is just wide open right here. and I just couldn't support it. Yes, sir. Okay. Kyle, I mean, <laughs> Charles. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> You're still written like. as Kyle on here. <laughs> I, I would like to hear more. Since I wasn't here, I'd like to hear more about the success that you had with the exterior grant program. Yes, uh, sir. Especially working on fixing up older homes. Yes, sir. And, and didn't we put a, a, a date or an age 30. of the homes? Yeah, like we, we did. There, that's why I'm saying I, I'm glad that the, the council member brought that up because there was great discussion as to whether it's going to be 30 years as it, as at home, yeah, only apply to homes that are older than 25 years or 30 years. And, and it was something that the whole council at the time said this makes a little bit more sense. Because there was concerns years, about that. I believe, yeah. That's why I'd like to bring it back. And yes, sir, I, I, I can get that information to you. Thank you. And the thing that I, I wanted to bring is I, I feel like, and I'm not sure if it fell into this because it says include but not limited to certain projects, but I'm just wondering over in uh, the area of like East Parkview, West Parkview, uh, the areas that are, the streets are more narrow uh, and a lot of people park in the street because they have no driveway or their driveways are in such bad shape that they can't park there. So I'm just wondering if we could include something like that would be like a driveway rehabilitation thing that would allow, I mean, I, I feel like there's a public a safety aspect to that, getting street uh, vehicles out of the street for uh, not just fire apparatus, but also passing cars that are going through and, and a lot of foot traffic. So if we could also add that to it, I would entertain a motion to table, Ben? Yeah, so I would, I would actually make a motion to approve the 2023 exterior paint program in the amount of $10,000 to be paid out of the general fund governing body department and to table the exterior grant program until the next meeting. Thank you. Is next meeting okay? That's perfect. Okay. Okay. Tom? I will second that. Okay. Seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 8-0. All right, moving to item 18, discuss and consider resolution for a public hearing for the establishment of a star bond district. Sean. Yes, sir, as council was uh, briefed earlier tonight at our special meeting, chapter 12, article 17 of the Kansas statutes outlines the procedures for establishing a star bond project district. The city is required to adopt a resolution with the following information. One, the fixed hour, date, and place of such hearing. Two, describe the proposed boundaries of the Starbond Project District. Three, describe the Starbond Project District Plan. Four, state, the dis, uh, state that a description and map of the proposed Starbond Project District are available for inspection at a time and place designated. Five, pro provide a description of all state, federal, and local tax incentives that apply or are anticipated to apply within the Star Bond District. And six, state that the governing body will consider findings necessary for the establishment of a Star Bond District. At this time, there is no physical uh, impact to the council, and staff recommends approval of the attached resolution. Thank you. Ben? Yeah, I appreciate the information that we heard uh, earlier this afternoon, evening, um, from the group that is working on this uh, Star Bond District as well as council uh, representing them. It's good to see this property have some forward movement. Um, it's been stalled for over a decade, and that's caused, obviously, consternation over the years to the city in terms of tax revenue and such. So I, I am excited about where this is headed um, and excited to support this group um, however we can. 
So I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 1143-2023, a resolution of the city of Park City, Kansas, stating that the city is considering the establishment of a star bond project district with an eligible area of the city and providing for notice of a public hearing to consider such establishment under the authority of the star bond act. Thank you, Jim. I would second that. Okay, Tom. I didn't have anything. I was going to second it. Any further discussion on this item? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Sorry, give me just a second. Okay, now we will recess and uh, call a meeting to order as the land bank. Give them just a minute. Thank you. Okay, we're now convened as the land bank. Uh, our meeting is called to order. Uh, Item number one is discuss and consider annual selection of chairperson, vice chairperson, treasurer, and treasurer from the Land Bank Board of Trustees membership, pursuant to KSA 12-5904A. Ben. Yeah, in keeping with how we've done this for several years, I recommend or make a motion to appoint uh, Mayor John Lanier uh, to serve as chairperson, Jim uh, Schrader uh, to serve as vice chairperson, and City Clerk Marlo Rugg to serve as treasurer of the Park City, Kansas Land Bank for a term of one year. George Glover. Yeah, I'll second the motion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 8-0. Okay. We will adjourn as the land bank and reconvene as the governing body. Now we have nothing left on the agenda to do except for governing body reports. I will start with Jim. I uh, just wanted to make a comment. Thanks, Kyle, for his time on the council. And uh, welcome, Charles, to the to the yes. seat. And look forward to working with you. And also, just wanted to note, you know, thank thanks Ben for his past year on uh, council president, and thank you all for your vote of confidence tonight putting me in that spot for next year. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Brandy? Um, I just want to reiterate, welcome to Charles. I'm looking forward to working with you and getting to know you. And also, um, I serve on the Convention and Tourism Board, and they met on last Tuesday. And one new thing that they've added is um, the sponsorship for ICT regulators, which is an indoor football um, and they'll have six games. It's They're all home games. None of them will be away, so we'll be bringing in six teams from Missouri, Texas, and um, Kansas to play in that league. So new things are happening there. Brandy, George Caps. I just welcome Charles. Thank you, George. Good to have you aboard, and that's all I have. Thank you. Tom? I'd like to welcome Charles. I had an opportunity to meet him on the Planning Commission, and uh, Good to see you here. Thank you, Tom. Uh, one other thing, I wanted to let KDOT's done musical chairs. The uh, secretary retired. The assistant secretary is taking her place acting, and there's a couple of people moving up. The local office has changed. Don Snyder's no longer here. Okay. And so there's some movement around in KDOT. That's all I got. Thank you. Charles. <laughs> well, I want to thank you, John, for uh, your vote of confidence in asking me to uh, uh, step up and take this position. It was, uh, you know, being here just a couple of years, you know, it's it's a little nerving to uh, walk into something like this and try to catch up. And um, I'm not caught up, but boy, my little feet are just running like this. It's, uh, you know, serving on council and planning commission in Kobe, Kansas, you know, had its uh, value to me, but uh, this is definitely a, a notch ab above where I was in Colby. We're, we were a little bit more, we didn't have microphones, you know, with <laughs> buttons to push, you know. This is, this is really nice, you know. But uh, 
Uh, I was going to introduce my wife while she's here, but she snuck out just a second. And my <laughs> son was back there, and he snuck out, but I know he had to go back to work. So, uh, but anyway, we, I hope that, uh, I think, I, I'm sure this is going to be a, a wonderful experience for me, and, and uh, the direction that this town is heading right now is just, to me, it's astonishing. You know, um, a couple of years ago when we moved here, my you know, and driving around the town and looking at the area it's in, and, and it's, I thought, man, this is a diamond. You know, it's a diamond in the rough right now, but there is so much possibility here. And then in two years, you know, it's like boom. And then with the STAR project, that's a once in a lifetime event, you know, to have happen in your area, you know. So I'm, I'm thrilled with that. I'm thrilled to be part of it. So thank you all. Thank you. So something I, I missed earlier, I couldn't get this to pull up on my computer, but um, Charles sent me his bio, and uh, as he mentioned, his wife was here, uh, his wife of 50 years. Uh, they live, obviously, in Ward 4 down in Wyndham. Uh, he's been there for a couple years. Uh, his prior life experience, he's uh, owned and operated a bowling alley, bowling center in Colby for 45 years, and a 100-unit mini storage facility. Uh, as well. Um, he was the president of the bowling Kansas Bowling Proprietors for a couple years. Um, and as we mentioned, um, he was a city council member there in Colby for eight years. And then as I also mentioned, he was on the planning commission. He was the chair for 23 years and on the commission for 24. Uh, moved here after retiring to be closer to his uh, grandkids and, and kids too. <laughs> yeah. um, so we're looking forward to your prior experience and getting some uh, helping us, you know, weigh in on things we're doing right and wrong, and uh, we look forward to your contributions to the city. So far, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far, you're headed in the right direction. It's going to be easy. <laughs> Good job, Tyler. So, so, Ben. Yes. First off, uh, I want to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I was <laughs> I was absent the last meeting with the flu, and so it is great to be able to see everybody's faces here uh First off, second off, I want to say thank you again to Kyle for the work that he has done over the last year. I sure have appreciated sitting next to him and learning and listening and bouncing ideas and, and such. And I so thank you, Kyle, for your service uh, to our city on council. But I'm sure that it won't be the end of what we hear from you. Uh, and then I'm also excited to serve with uh, Mr. Swanky and look forward to learning from him as well as I get to sit next to him and, and glean from those years of experience uh, that you have, so I'm excited for that. A lot of years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't have as many in, but uh, I appreciate that. And then finally, I wanted to bring up here, we've had obviously one, <clears throat> a couple changes over the last few weeks, obviously with Kyle stepping off, Charles stepping on, uh, and such. I would like to say maybe uh, consider some, we've got to fill a board seat that Kyle had, um, liaison, board liaison position that Kyle had, and then also... Um, I know there's a two of us actually that don't actually have any uh, board liaison positions as, as the actual liaison. I think both George Glover and I both serve as alternates. Well, I have one and he has two, and then finding Charles a spot. So maybe looking at, at re-examining. I know we just covered that in December, but with some of these shortages and things, it might be a good time just to re-examine and make sure. So I guess we'll, I, I know we're in council comments, but it's a, a good point to bring up. Kyle was the liaison to the Park and Rec and Tree Advisory Boards, um, which Ben did mention to me uh, this past week that he was interested in, in taking that spot, uh, if nobody opposed to it. And then, um, so he was an alternate. Getting that right? Give me just a second here. Oh, that's it. Oh, he was CCUA, which he's going to continue to do the CCUA. So, uh, and then Charles wouldn't have any anything to fill as a liaison or anything like that too. And so, if there's anything else, obviously his prior expertise and expertness is uh, planning and zoning. So, uh, if there's something like that, I guess we have Tom's the liaison to that, and Jim is the alternate to it. So, um, anyway, so. If I guess we want to put that on, let's put that on the next agenda to discuss those uh, positions, the liaison positions from Councilman Nordic. Thank you, George. 
Yeah, I'd like to thank Kyle for his time here on the council and also welcome Charles uh, to, the to the council with his experience. It's good to have that. Um, also, the Christmas tree light winners. I appreciate that. Um, I had a chance to go around it. The city really looks nice with the lights during that time, and I think it kind of puts us in the spirit as well. Also, the progression of the 61st and Broadway roundabout, that's coming along pretty nice. I don't know if anybody has had a chance to go to our new store in Park City, Discount Bins. It's a shout out, the old Leakers. It's the old Atwoods building next to Leakers. If you get a chance, you can uh, catch them on Facebook. Thank you. Charlie. Um, I'm glad to have a, uh, another Charlie on the council. <laughs> so appreciate Charles and your willingness to step up and, and uh, help lead. And uh, appreciate Kyle and uh, his service to the city and uh, the things that he did. Um, that's all I got. Okay. I have two Charlies and two Georges now. <laughs> so I don't have anything. I already said everything I was going to say with the uh, home buyer stuff. So uh, with that said, I would entertain a non Debatable motion to adjourn. Ben. Jim. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn by Ben, seconded by Jim. All in favor? All right. Uh, all opposed? We're adjourned.